zero. So that better happen. So I've got my 1, 6, 11, 66, 10, positive 60, 0. Oh, good. It really was a solution. Now, usually we don't let you stop here. Instead, we would say, okay, keep working, find the rest of the zeros. And by factoring out one of them using my synthetic division, I'm always left, or I usually get down to something that's a nice quadratic, x squared plus 11x plus 10. And if I want to find the rest of the zeros, I set it equal to zero and work, it, work, work through it. This one again factors into x plus 10 times x plus 1 equals zero. That will give me x plus 10 equals 0, and x plus 1 equals 0. So this will give me x equals 10, negative 10, and x equals negative 1. You're going to be so tired of doing this, it won't even be funny. You laugh, but it's true. All right. Back in the olden days, before we had graphing calculators, and for those of you who had sadistic previous math teachers, the rational root test was what we used in order to start figuring out what the first thing we could divide out of our polynomial was to work our way down to a nice quadratic that we had a way to solve. Lucky for you, I felt that I suffered enough for all of us having to do this, so I'm not going to make you use the rational root test to do this. But what the rational root test says is if you've got a polynomial and these coefficients are all integers, then if there is a rational root, then the way it's going to be look, the way it's going to look is it will be a factor of my constant term divided by a factor of my leading coefficient. And so you can make fractions out of these and say, okay, well, it'll be this, or it'll be this, or it'll be this. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense written in math ease and a little bit of English. So let's do it with actual numbers and hopefully it'll make a little more sense. Here are some numbers. The rational root test says if there's a rational root, it's going to be factors of this number divided by factors of the leading coefficient. So what are the factors of the constant term? Three and one. Okay, factors of three, you said three. Three and one is prime, right? And one. Now, the one thing that we always note in our rational root test is we always take both the positive and the negative versions because we don't know if it was the positive ones or the negative ones right. that came together to be the positive three. So they're plus and minus three and plus and minus one. <coughs> what are the factors of my leading coefficient? One. Plus or minus one. Yeah. Oops, well, I got you. They will be plus or minus one because my leading coefficient is one. Now the rational root test says I make fractions out of these. So if I take positive three and put it over positive one, I get three. If I take negative three and put it over positive one, I get negative, negative three. If I take positive three and put it over negative one, I get already written, and negative 3 and put it over negative 1, I get 3, so I already wrote that. Now I'm going to move on to the next one. Positive 1 over positive 1 is 1, positive 1 over negative 1 is negative 1, and as you noticed when I just switched the ones up here and down here, I ended up with the same ones. Yes? Does the last number, is that affected by like a, a positive or a negative sign? No, it's not. All right. You look at just the number without looking at the positive or negative in front of it because we always take the plus or minus. That's so this tells you that <coughs> these are the possible rational roots. How many of them are there there? How many numbers do I have there? I've got four, right? Four numbers. Does that mean all of those are going to be roots of my polynomial? No. No, because what's the most roots my polynomial can have? Three. Three. So this list, just because it, it's in there doesn't mean it is a root. It only says that if there are rational roots, it will be 
in this list. So now let's talk about how I really want you to find these without having to write this out all the time. This one, I was okay with three and one. Back in the old days, we came to hate numbers like 36 and 48. Think about all those factors. It was miserable. So how are we going to do this instead? Well, here's what you get to do. You get to divide all of them. No. I'm not, like I said, I suffered for enough, enough for all of us for that. Instead, what you get to do is you get to graph this on your calculator.